Okay, welcome back to my new LaTeX tutorial. Uh, in the previous video, I explained what you can see here. So how to add uh, sections, table of contents, um, small title page and so on. And now I would uh, like to continue with inserting figures because I think this is a very important thing which you will need in any case, whatever you will do with LaTeX in the future, but uh, using um, figures or yeah, maybe also later tables is very important. So I will concentrate on that now. And for that purpose, we can let in principle everything as it is. But of course, the first thing which we need is a figure. And for that purpose, as you can see here, I copied the file logo.png into the same folder in which also our documents are placed. So uh, later we can directly access this within our LaTeX document. And in order to implement this, uh, we have to include another package. And uh, this is called graphics. Uh, it's uh, written with CX at the end. This is important. And uh, in order to check whether it's installed on your system, you can just one time compile it. And if it does not give you any error message, it means that it's installed. Otherwise, uh, depending on the distribution which you are using, you have to manually install this because without that package, it will not work. Now we go into our text to a position where we would like to insert our figure. Uh, so for example, we want to insert it uh, into or at the end of our third section. So um, one possibility is that we go here at the, to the end of the third section or we can go here into our um, PDF preview. We can click with the right mouse button into that and then we click here, uh, click to jump to the line and then you can see that uh, in TechMaker, the cursor automatically jumps to the position on which we clicked here. Now, this is a little bit easier to handle compared to uh, manually find the place, depending how uh, huge your document is, for example. So, and then at the end of our blind text, uh, maybe we can uh, add some more blind text here. Uh, let's suppose uh, also five times. And here we include now our graphics. So for that, we have to use the command include graphics. Uh, we can also scale that, but this I will show you in, in a few seconds. So now we have to insert here our name of the file that we uh, have chosen. In this case, logo.png was the right file name. And it's not necessary that it's a PNG. It could also be a JPEG, for example, or a bitmap. But if you use uh, another format like GIF, then it could lead to troubles. Also, if you use um, P, uh, PS postscript or EPS, then uh, there might be problems which uh, which should be solved before. So the best thing is that you convert this either into a PDF. PDF will also work very well or uh, a bitmap type of um, format like PNG, for example. I, However, I would always uh, recommend to use PDF because the advantage is that it's vector format. So at the end, you will get the best result as possible. So now, um, we have to search our figure basically. And as you can see, it's quite huge yeah, because uh, definitely the resolution of the of the picture is very high and we have to shrink it down. Yeah? So you can use several options for that. Either you, you can scale it um, by writing here. Uh, so here, this is uh, this auto completion problem. So here you can write, for example, scale and 0 0.2, which means that the size will be shrinked to 20% of the size of the original figure. And when we do that and compile it again, uh, you can see it's still very huge. Now, so we have to go to much smaller values. Let's suppose we go to uh, 0 0 0.005. Yeah, so now you can now you can see it already looks much better. Maybe one can even go a little bit more down to 0 0 0.003. And in this case, um, it should fit now perfectly to our page. Uh, however, uh, this is manually adjusting, of course, and uh, there are better options to do that. First of all, what I would like to show you is how to um, get rid of this uh, placement of the text around the figure. Yeah. So first of all, I would like to place it into a center environment. Um, begin center and end center which means that uh, not only the figure is now centered in the text, but also uh, the text stops here above the figure and it starts again below that figure. So I think this is the best way how to do that. And then you can also change the size of the figure in different ways. So for example, you could write here 
instead of scale, you can use width equals, for example, um, three centimeter. And when you do that, then, okay, the figure is much smaller, but also the advantage is that when you use uh, the width or when you use uh, the width option in centimeter, then it's easier to imagine how the figure will look like at the end. And of course, you can also separately choose a height. Uh, so instead of width, you can also use height equals seven, uh, equal seven centimeter. And uh, then it gets bigger, but now the height is adjusted, not the width. Or you can also change both things individually. So you can here uh, write width equals seven centimeter, height equals uh, seven centimeter. And when you compile that, it still works. But as you will see, now uh, it's not to scale anymore just because uh, it tries to adjust both things separately, which I would really not recommend. My suggestion is that you use width equals two, and then uh, according to the length of the of the text line, you can actually adjust the value. So you can uh, write, for example, but I'm normally writing 0. Point, uh, let's suppose 0. 0.75 times text width. And when you compile that, then you will see now that uh, the width of the picture is exactly 75% of the text width of the line width, yeah? which means that now um, it, it scales with the text or it scales now with the page layout that you choose. And this is a very important feature, uh, which I'm normally trying to use. Yeah? So maybe we can even make it a little bit smaller, 60% of the text width, for example. However, now we have our figure included, but it would also be nice, I think, to add some uh, caption and to label it and to reference to this picture. So we create another environment around that, which we call figure. Yeah? So we write here begin figure uh, and end figure. And when we compile this, you will see now that the figure does not appear anymore on the position where we placed it, but is now shown on the top of the page. Now, and this is because this, this figure environment is a so-called floating environment, which makes LaTeX to put the picture at a position where it thinks that it should be best. Now, in some cases, in most of the cases, it is better, but in some cases, maybe you also want to manually adjust that. So. Um, what you can do is, for example, write in brackets behind that uh, HBT. Now, this is, I think, the standard configuration, which means that first LaTeX tries to put it here, H stand for here, uh, or it, if this is not possible or it does not look good at the end, it will try to put it on the bottom of the page for B. And if this does also not work very well, then it tries to insert it on the top of the page. Or in some cases, you want to really force LaTeX to put it on a specific position. Yeah? For example, if it's really not possible to adjust it with uh, these commands here, you can, for example, write exclamation mark uh, and then H. So all other parameters are overwritten, basically. And uh, LaTeX then tries to really put it here on that position where you inserted that. Um, yeah. However, uh, in this case, it does not change so much because it was already on a good place. So um, yeah, but uh, this this you can try if you are really having problems with the figure to be placed on a certain position, you can try that. Um, or another possibility is that you uh, include another package, uh, which is called float. And uh, then you can use another command here, which is called restyle float. And here you can insert figure. And then you can use a capital H here. Uh, and when you do that, then uh, it really ignores everything which LaTeX tries to improve. And uh, it really puts it here on the position where you inserted that in between these blind texts here. However, uh, it can look very ugly and I really don't recommend that. But in some cases, maybe it might be necessary to do that. So this is an option which you can keep in mind. The same you can also use later for tables. Yeah, With this package float, you can actually avoid floating. Yeah? It's the opposite of what, it, uh, of what the name implies. Okay. Now we have uh, inserted our graphics, but as I said, we also would like to have some caption. So um, we can write here, this is our first figure. And when we compile that, 
you can see that uh, first of all the figure number is automatically placed uh, in the same way how the section number is placed automatically and uh, yeah the caption is shown here so this also works very well maybe i can change this h back to uh, normal h then it looks a little bit uh, nicer i hope um, yeah and uh, then we can also give a label to that so we can write here label similar to the section label i will write now here fig double dot and uh, I will call it maybe logo uh, because the file name is also logo and then we can go to another position here for example below that line text and, and then we can write here uh, this logo is shown in figure reference fig logo and now when we compile that uh, again it's showing uh, double question marks and when we compile it again then it should show the right figure number, yeah, figure one exactly, and figure one is presented here. So now if you insert a figure above that or below that, it will automatically adjust the reference according to that and you don't have to think about it. And this is a very nice feature and much better, of course, than in a word processing software like Word, for example. Yeah? So now you know how to insert figures, how to change the width, the uh, size, and so on. Um, however, uh, I was asked once if it's possible to say something about inserting subfigures. So, uh, which means that we want to have, for example, here figure 1a, figure 1b, and so on. So, in order to do that, we have to insert here another um, package, which is called um, subcaption. Um, there is also another one called subfigure, I think, but this is uh, not uh, maintained anymore. So, one should avoid that. And subcaption is, I think, the best idea how to do that. And now we can go back to our um, to our include graphics command and we can write here or we can put this in another environment which is called subfigure and uh, yeah here we should also insert and subfigure and for the subfigure uh, environment we also have to um, insert another uh, parameter which is the width of the subfigure so let's suppose we want to have it 40% uh, of the text width. So we can write here 0.4 text width. And now you will see that uh, it, this picture will be shown very small because then here we have to delete it uh, here or we can write here um, width equals to text width. So it will now adjust this logo according to the width of the subfigure. And I think this is the easiest way how to do that. And um, yeah, we can just for the time being insert another subfigure here below that. Uh, and just could be, for example, the same one and the same uh, the same width and so on. So if we compile that, both are shown here, though everything works well. Yeah. And of course, we can also add a caption. So we can write here caption uh, subfigure one. And we can also add a label uh, subfig um, logo one, for example. And uh, below that, uh, yeah, and this we can also maybe copy paste and put it below this subfigure here. And uh, we can write here subfigure 2, uh, logo 2. And then we can also write here, this is shown in figure uh, subfig logo 2 as a reference. And I hope that now uh, I didn't do any mistake. And as you can see here, now it's shown, this logo is shown in figure 1b and uh, this is exactly what we intended so this is now figure number 1b okay yeah i hope this helps you and now you are able to insert figures in the next video i'm going to show you how to insert tables what you can do with that basically uh, then i will try to continue with some mathematics um, to show how you can actually insert equations equation arrays and so on and then uh, when all the important uh, topics are covered then i would like to also show you how you can create cvs how you can create presentations with latich and so on but of course as usual if you have any questions uh, related to this topic here please put it into the comment section i will try to help as much as i can i will also try to cover these questions in my next videos and yeah if you like this video here i would be really happy if you hit the like button if you subscribe my channel and uh, yeah then hopefully see you soon for the next latich video